the keeper of the keys. Boom, they knocked again. Dudley jerked awake. Where's the cannon, he said stupidly. There was a crash behind them and Uncle Vernon came skidding into the room. He was holding a rifle in his hands. Now they knew what had been in the long, thin package he had brought with them. Who's there, he shouted. I warn you, I'm armed. There was a pause. Then, smash. The door was hit with, with such force that it swung clean of it, off its hinges and with a defeating crash landed flat on the floor. A giant of a man was standing in the doorway. His face was almost completely hidden by a long shaggy mane of hair and a wild tangled beard. But you can make out his eyes glinting like black beetles under all the hair. The giant squeezed his way into the hut, stooping so that his head just brushed the ceiling. He bent down, picked up the door and fitted it easily back into the frame. The noise of the storm outside dropped a little. He turned to look at them all. Couldn't make us a cup of tea, could you? It's not been an easy journey. He strode over to the sofa where Dudley sat, frozen with fear. Budge up, you great lump, said the stranger. Dudley squeaked and ran to hide behind his mother, who was crouching, terrified, behind Uncle Vernon. Ah, here's Harry, said the giant. Harry looked up into the fierce, wild, shadowy face and saw that the beetle eyes were crinkled in a smile. Last time I saw you, you was only a baby, said the giant. Yeah, look a lot like your dad, but you got your mom's eyes. Uncle Vernon made a funny, rasping noise. I demand that you leave at once, sir, he said. You are breaking and entering. Ah, shut up, Dursley, you great prune, said the giant. He reached over the back of the sofa, jerked the gun out of Uncle Vernon's hands, bent it into a knot as easily as if it had been made of rubber, and threw it into a corner of the room. Uncle Vernon made another funny noise, like a mask being trodden on. Anyway, Harry, said the giant, turning his back on the Dursleys, a ha very happy birthday to you. Got some for you here. I might have sat on it at some point, but it's all, it'll taste all right. From an inside pocket of his black overcoat, he pulled a slightly squashed box. Harry opened it with trembling fingers. Inside was a large sticky chocolate cake with happy birthday Harry written on it in green icing. Harry looked up at the giant. He meant to say thank you, but the words got lost on the way, on the way to his mouth. And what he said and said was, who are you? The giant chuckled. True, I haven't introduced myself. Rubus Hagrid, keeper of the keys and grounds at Hogwarts. He held out an enormous hand and shook Harry's whole arm. What about that tea then, eh? He said, rubbing his hands together. I'd not say no to someone stronger if you got it, mind. His eyes fell on the empty grate with the shriveled chip bags in and snorted. He bent down over the fireplace. They couldn't see what he was doing, but when he drew back a second later, there was a roaring fire. It filled the whole damp hut with flickering light and Harry felt the warmth wash over him as though he'd sunk into a hot bath. The giant sat back down on the sofa, which sagged, which sagged under his weight and began taking all sorts of things out of the pockets of his coat. A copper kettle, a squashy package of sausages, a poker, a teapot, several chip mugs, and a bottle of some amber liquid that he took a swig from before starting to make tea. Soon, the hut was full of the sound and smell of sizzling sausage. Nobody said a thing while the giant was working, but as he slid the first six fat, juicy, slidey burnt sausages from the poker, Dudley fidgeted a little. Uncle Vernon said sharply, don't touch anything he gives you, Dudley. The giant chuckled darkly. Your great pudding of a son didn't need fattening anymore, Dursley, don't worry. He passed the sausage to Harry, who was so hungry he had never tasted anything so wonderful, but still couldn't take his eyes off the giant. Finally, as nobody seemed but to explain anything, he said, I'm sorry, but I still don't really know who you are. The giant took a gulp of tea and wiped his mouth with the back of his hand. Call me Hagrid, he said. Everyone does. And I, like I told you, I'm the keeper of keys at Hogwarts. You all know about Hogwarts, of course. Uh, no, said Harry. Hagrid looked shocked. Sorry, Harry said quickly. Sorry, barked Hagrid, turning to stare at the Dursleys. Who shrank back in the shadows? It's them that should be sorry. I knew you weren't getting your letters, but I never thought you wouldn't even know about Hogwarts for crying out loud. Did you never wonder where your parents learned it all? Oh, what? asked Harry. Oh, what? Hagrid thundered. Now wait just a second. He had leapt, leaped to his feet. In his anger, he seemed to fill the whole hut. The Dursleys were cowering against the wall. Do you mean to tell me, he growled at Dursleys, that this boy, this boy knows nothing about anything? Harry thought this was going a bit far. He had been to school after all, and his marks weren't bad. I know some things, he said. I can, you know, do math and stuff. But Hagrid simply waved his hand and said, About our world, I mean your world, my world, your parents' world. 
What world? Hagrid looked as if he was about to explode. Thursley, he boomed. Uncle Vernon, who had gone very pale, whispered something that sounded like mimble wimble. Hagrid stared wildly at Harry. But you must know about your mom and dad, I said. I mean, they're famous. You're famous. What? My mom and dad weren't famous, were they? You don't know. You don't know. Hagrid ran his fingers through his hair, fixing Harry with a bewildered stare. You don't know what you are, he said finally. Uncle Vernon suddenly found his voice. Stop, he commanded. Stop right there, sir. I forbid you to tell this boy anything. A braver man than Vernon Dursley would have quailed under the furious look Hagrid now gave. When Hagrid spoke, his every syllable trembled with rage. You never told him. Never told him that was in the letter Dumbledore left for him. I was there. I saw, I saw Dumbledore leave it, Dursley, and you kept it from him all these years. Kept what from me, said Harry. Stop, I forbid you, yelled Uncle Vernon in panic, and Petunia gave a gasp of horror. Ah, go boil your heads, both of you, said Hagrid. Harry, you're a wizard. There was silence inside the hut. Only the sea and the whistling wind could be heard. I'm a what, gasped Harry. A wizard, of course, said Hagrid, sitting back down on the sofa, which groaned and, sna and sank even lower. And a thumping good one, I'd say. You've, once you've been trained a bit, with a mum and a dad like yours, what else would you be? And I reckon it's about time you read your letters. Harry stretched out his hand at last to take this yellowish envelope addressed in emerald green to Mr. H. Potter, the floor, hutter, hut on the rock, the sea. He pulled out the letter and read, Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, Headmaster Albus Dumbledore. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Please find and close a list of all necessary books and equipment. Term begins on September 1st. We await your owl, but by no later than July 31st. Sincerely, Minerva McGonagall, Deputy Head Mistress. Questions explode inside Harry's head like fireworks, and he couldn't decide which to ask first. After a few minutes, he stammered. What does it mean, they await my owl? Gallop and Gordon, that reminds me, said Hagrid, clapping a hand to his forehead with enough force to knock over a cart horse, and from yet another pocket inside his overcoat, he pulled an owl, a real, live, rather ruffled-looking owl, a long quill and a roll of parchment. With his tongue between his teeth, he scribbled a note to ha that Harry could read upside down. Dear Professor Dumbledore, give Harry his letter, taking him to buy his things tomorrow. Weather's horrible. Hope you're well. Hagrid. Hagrid rolled up the note, gave it to the owl, which clamped it into its beak, went to the door, and threw the owl out into the storm. Then he came back and sat down as though this was as normal as talking on the telephone. Harry realized his mouth was open and closed it quickly. Where was I, said Hagrid. He's not going, Uncle Vernon said. Hagrid grunted. I'd like to see a great muggle like you stop him, he said. A what, said Harry, interested? A muggle, said Hagrid. It's what we call non-magic folks like them. It's, ain't, it, ain't it your bad luck you grew up in a family to the, uh, of the biggest muggle I ever laid eyes on? We swore when we took him in we'd put a stop to that rubbish, said Uncle Vernon. Swore we'd stamp it out of him. Wizard indeed. You knew, said Harry? You knew I'm a wizard? Knew, shrieked Aunt Petunia. No, of course we knew. How could you not be? My dreaded sister being what she was. Oh, she got a letter just like that and disappeared off to that, that school and came home every vacation with her pockets full of frocks born turning teacups into rats. I was the only one who saw her for what she was, a freak. But for my mother and father, oh no, it was Lily this and Lily that. They were proud of having a witch in the family. She stopped to draw a deep breath and then went ranting on. It seemed she had been wanting to say all this for years. Then she met that potter at school, and they left and got married and had you, and of course I knew you'd be just the same, just as strange, just as abnormal, and then, if you please, she went on and got herself blown up and got land and we landed with you. Harry had gone very white. As soon as he found his voice, he said, Blown up? You told me they died in a car crash. Car crash, roared Hagrid, jumping up so angrily that the Dursleys scuttled back into the corner. How could a car crash Galilee and James Potter? It's an outrage, a scandal. Harry Potter not knowing his own story when every kid in, the, in our world knows his name. But why? What happened? Harry asked urgently. The anger faded from Hagrid's face. He looked suddenly anxious. I never expected this, he said in a low, worried voice. I had no idea when Dumbledore told me there might be trouble getting hold of you, how much you didn't know. Ah, oh, Harry, I don't know if I'm the right person to tell you, but someone's gotta. You can't go off to Hagrid's not knowing. He threw a dirty look at the Dursleys. Well, it's best you know as much as I can tell you. 
Mind I can't tell you everything. It's a great mystery part of it. He sat down, stared into the fire for a few seconds, and then said, it begins, I suppose, with, with, a, with a person called, but it's incredible, you don't know his name. Everyone in our world knows. Who? Well, I don't like saying the name of it if I can't help it. No one does. Why not? Gulp and garagols, Harry. People are still scared. Blimey, this is difficult. See, there was this wizard who went bad, as bad as you can go. Worse, worse than worse. His name was Hagrid Gulp, but no words can come out. Could you write it down, Harry suggested? Nah, I can't spell it. All right. His name is Voldemort. Hagrid shuddered. Don't make me say it again. Anyway, this, this wizard, about 20 years ago now, started looking for followers. Got him too. Some were afraid. Some just wanted a bit of his power because he was getting himself power, all right? Dark days, Harry. Didn't know who to trust. Didn't dare get friendly with strange wizards or witches. Terrible things were happening. He was taken over. Of course, some stood up to him and he killed him horribly. One of the only safe places was Hogwarts. Reckon Dumbledore is the only you know, you know who was afraid of. Didn't dare to try taking the school. Not just then, anyway. Now your mom and dad were as good a witch, witch and wizard as I ever knew. Head boy and girl at Hogwarts in their day. Suppose the mystery is why you know who never tried to get him on his side before. They probably, he probably knew they were too close to Dumbledore to want anything to do with the dark side. Maybe he thought he could persuade him. Maybe he just wanted him out of, the, out of the way. All anyone knows is he turned up in the village where you were all living on Halloween 10 years ago. You were just a year old. He came to your house and Hagrid suddenly pulled out a very dirty spotted handkerchief and blew his nose with a sound like a foghorn. Sorry, he said, but it's that sad. I knew your mom and dad and nicer people you couldn't find. Anyway, you know who killed him. And then, this is the real mystery of the thing. He tried to kill you too. Wanted to make a clean job of it, I suppose. Or maybe he just ki liked killing by then. But he couldn't do it. Never wondered how you got that mark on your forehead. That's no ordinary cut. That's what you get when a powerful evil curse touches you. Took care of your mom and dad and your house even. But it didn't work on you. And that's why you're famous, Harry. No one ever lived after he decided to kill them. No one except you. And he killed some of the best witches and wizards of the age. The Mickinans, the Bones, the Pruitts. And you was the only baby and you lived. Something very painful was going on in Harry's mind. As, Harry, as Hagrid's story came so, to a close, he saw again in the blindish flash of green light more clearly than he had ever remembered it before. And he remembered something else for the first time in his life, a high, cold, cruel laugh. Hagrid was watching him sadly. Took you from the ruined house myself on Dumbledore's orders. Brought you here, the slot. Lord of all tosh, said Uncle Vernon. Harry jumped. He had almost forgotten that the Dursleys were there. Uncle Vernon certainly seemed to have got back his courage. He was glaring at Hagrid and his fists were clenched. Now you listen here, boy, he snarled. I accept there's some, something strange about you. Probably nothing a good beating wouldn't have cured. And as, as for all this about your parents, well, they were weirdos, no denying it. And, they, and, the, and the world's better off without them, in my opinion. As for all they got, getting mixed up with these wizarding types. Just what I expected. Always knew they'd come to a sticky end. But at that moment, Hagrid leapt from, leapt from the sofa and drew a battered pink umbrella from inside his coat. Pointing this at Uncle Vernon like a sword, he said, I'm warning you, Dursley, I'm warning you, one more word. In danger of being spread on the end of an umbrella by a bearded giant, Uncle Vernon's courage failed again. He flattened himself again against the wall and fell silent. That's better, said Hagrid, breathing heavily and sitting back down on the sofa, which this time sagged right down to the floor. Harry, meanwhile, still had questions to ask, hundreds of them. But what happened to Vol? Sorry, I mean, you know who. Good question, Harry. He disappeared, vanished, same night he tried to kill you. Make it even more famous. That's the biggest mystery, see? He was getting more and more powerful. Why'd he go? Some say he died. Cod's wallop, in my opinion. Don't know if he had enough human left in him to die. Some say he's still, he's still out there, biding his time. Like, but I don't believe it. People who was on his side came back to, to ours. Some of them came at kind of trances. Don't reckon they could have done, done if he was coming back. Most of us reckon he's still out there somewhere, but lost his powers. Too weak to carry on. Because something about you finished him, Harry. There was something going on that night he hadn't counted on. I don't know what it was, no one does, but something about you stumped him, all right. Hagrid looked at Harry with warmth and respect blazing in his eyes, but Harry, instead of feeling pleased and proud, felt quite sure there had been a horrible mistake. A wizard? Him? How could it possibly be? He spent his life being clouded by Dudley and bullied by Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon. If he was really a wizard, 
Why hadn't they been turned into a toad every time they tried to lock him in his cupboard? If he'd once defeated the greatest sorcerer in the world, how come Dudley had always been able to kick him around like a football? Hagrid, he said quietly, I think you must have a mistake. I don't think I can be a wizard. To his surprise, Harry chuckled. Hagrid chuckled. Not a wizard, eh? Never made things happen when, when you were scared or angry? Harry looked into the fire. Now he came to think about it. Every odd thing that had ever made his aunt and uncle furious with him happened when he, Harry, had been upset or angry. Chased by Dudley's gang, he had somehow found himself out of their reach. Dreading going to school with that ridiculous haircut, he managed to make his hair grow back. And the very last time Dudley had hit him, hadn't he got his revenge without even realizing he was, go he was doing it? Hadn't he set a boa constrictor on him? Harry looked back at Hagrid, smiling, and saw that Hagrid was positively beaming at him. See, said Hagrid, Harry Potter, not a wizard? You wait, you'll be right famous at Hogwarts. But Uncle Vernon wasn't going to give it without a fight. Haven't I told you he's not going, he hissed. He's going to Stonewall High, and he'll be grateful for it. I've, I've read those letters, and, he needs, all, and he, he needs all sorts of rubbish, spell books and wands, and... If he wants to go, a great mugger like you won't stop him, growled Hagrid. Stop Lily and Jane Potter's son going to Hogwarts? Are you mad? His name's been down ever since he was born. He's off the finest school of witchcraft and wizardry in the world. Seven years there and he won't know himself. He'll be with the youngsters of his own sort for a change and he'll be under the greatest headmaster Hogwarts ever had, Albus Dumbledore. I am not paying for some crackpotted old fool to teach him magic tricks, yelled Uncle Vernon, but he finally got too far. Hagrid seized his umbrella and whirled it over his head. Never, he thundered, insult Albus Dumbledore in front of me. He brought the umbrella, swishing down through the air to point at Dudley. There was a flash of violet light, sounded like a firecracker, a sharp squeal, and the next second, Dudley was dancing on the spot with his hands clasped over his fat bottom, howling in pain. When he turned his back on them, Harry saw Curly's pig's tail poking through the hole in his trousers. Uncle Vernon roared. Pulling Aunt Petunia and Dudley into the other room, he cast one last terrified look at Hagrid and slammed the door behind them. Hagrid looked down at his umbrella and stroked his beard. Shouldn't have lost my temper, he said ruefully, but it didn't work anyway. I meant to turn him into a pig, but I suppose he was so much like a pig anyway, there wasn't much left to do. He cast a sideways look at Harry under his bushy eyebrows. Be grateful if you didn't mention that anyone at Hogwarts. I'm not supposed to do magic, strict speaking. speaking. I, was, I was allowed to, hear, to be a different follower, yet letters stuff on the reasons I was so keen to take on the job. Why aren't you supposed to do magic? asked Harry. Oh, well. I was at Hogwarts myself, but I, uh, I got expelled, to tell you the truth. In my third year, they snapped me wand and half and everything, but Dumbledore let me stay on as a gamekeeper. Great man, Dumbledore. Why were you expelled? It's getting late, and we've got lots to do tomorrow, said Hagrid. Got to get up to town and get all your books and that. He took up his thick black coat and threw it to Harry. You can keep under that, he said. Don't mind if it wriggles a bit. I think I've still got a couple of dormice in one of those pockets. End of chapter 4